All right, today I want to talk about tribulation, and I pray that none of you are a part of this. I pray you all get saved before the rapture. A lot of people don't believe there's a rapture. Some people believe it's not a pre-tribulation. Yeah, I don't want to get into all that right now. I've taught, made videos about that in the past. But I truly believe there's a, there was a pre-tribulation rapture because the Bible shows us this uh, in many verses. But today, it's faith alone. Faith alone in what? Faith alone, the gospel tells us that we have faith in how Christ died for our sins, spilling his blood, making the blood atonement, a final blood sacrifice for all sins forever. And then Jesus died, and for three days was dead and buried, and on the third day he rose again resurrected. And it's interesting because he also took the Old Testament saints and Abraham's bosom up with them when he resurrected, because he died for all people, past, present, and future. If they were dead before Jesus uh, was crucified and resurrected, and they, and they kept the law in the Old Testament, then they got taken out, and they're in the third heaven with God right now. And then, you know, some people are in human, some people are in their bodies and glorified bodies already. Some people are still in their, in their spirit uh, bodies, which means they'll come down at the first resurrection. They'll come down and get their body go back up in a glorified body. But for right now, I want to talk about tribulation. In tribulation, there are faith plus works. There's no works today because if there's works, you couldn't even be saved because you'd be trusting in something else other than what Jesus did. So it's faith alone. In what Jesus did, how He did it, spilling His blood for your sins to be, for your sins to be forgiven. You can't be forgiven for sins without that blood. God doesn't forgive without blood, and that blood of God, Christ Jesus spilled, is the only way of forgiveness truly. So, when it comes to tribulation, if people miss the rapture, I pray you don't miss the rapture. And what had happened? You is faith plus works. The faith in what? Well, the faith in that Jesus was the Messiah, the Old Testament. The Old Testament Jews they knew there would be a promised seed, as it says in, uh, clear back in Genesis. There will be a promised seed, and that seed will bruise his heel on the serpent's head. And Jesus hasn't done that yet. He'll come back down in Armageddon, and he's going to bruise his heel on the devil's head when he returns. So that time, that's when we'll all come back with him, because a pre-tribulation rapture will happen. Boom, rapture, and then tribulation begins. That new dispensation starts. So we have to understand. I don't want you taking my word for it. Say, oh, there's faith puck words. All oh, this, this guy here said that, okay. Well, no, don't take my word for it. Take the Bible's word for it. Let's look at Revelation chapter 14 in verse 12. And it says, here's the patience of the saints. Well, what saints? Well, these are tribulation saints. We're saints today, the church, the bride. But these are people that didn't make it to the rapture. And these are people that are Jews. Now, tribulations for the Jews for God to go back to dealing with the Jews so they'll come to Jesus because they didn't before they rejected and soon they'll come to Christ and he'll they'll do so in tribulation now some Jews got saved beforehand you know in, in, in the church age some not many but some but the time for the Jews to get saved to come to Jesus is in the tribulation because we see in tribulation uh, in the book of Revelation God's go, God goes back to favoring them telling them to flee to the wilderness flee to the mountains and it'll be nurtured for time, nurtured for time, times, and half a times. It tells us. So coming back to this, what do we need to do? Well, first we want to make sure that we understand that it is faith plus works. Revelation fourteen twelve. It says, "Here's the patience of the saints." Of course, again, the tribulation saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and keep and the faith of Jesus. Keep the commandments. Well, who's keeping commandments? Jews. Jews are keeping the commandments of their Old Testament law. Even today, they're trying to keep the commandments. So we need to see that in Revelation 14, 12. Let's look at Revelation 12, 17. Revelation 12, 17 says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Now the woman in this context is Israel. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Well, that's the Jews. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. These are, ones, these are Jews because it says the woman. Well, that's Israel as we see in the context of chapter 12 of Revelation. This is the, in tribulation where we see the Jews start to realize that, wait a minute, Jesus was the Messiah. He was our, our, our promised seed. And they start being like, well, Jesus is the one. And then they're also keeping the commandments. The Jews try to keep commandments today, even all these thousands of years. But that's what we see here. Let's look at Revelation chapter 13, 16. Now, there's things that, now this pertains more to Jews and non-Jews alike. It's, this actually pertains to everybody in tribulation. If you don't go through tribulation, you get raptured, you don't pay, take part of this at all. You're completely spared from it. You'll be spared from the wrath of God. So let's look at uh, Revelation 13, 16. Here's something you cannot do, or you'll be damned to hell. 13, 16. And he, that, and he caused a fall. Who's he? He, the Antichrist, which at that point would be the son of perdition, Satan himself. And it sounds like he'll be 
possessing the body of the dead man of the Antichrist because there's two parts of the Antichrist. It said, He caused all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or on their forehead, and that no man uh, might buy or sell save he that have the mark of the beast or the number of his name. Mark of the beast. Now, it's saying you can't buy or sell without it, without this mark. I don't know. I was always wondering for years if it was maybe like an RFID chip, something that was kind of implanted in your hand where it was like connected to your bank account. I don't know. It's curious because we have that technology in this day and age. That could be done. No problem. Or it could be something that's more of a sign of alliance or allegiance or worship to this one world leader, the Antichrist, which is, uh, you know, the beast, uh, the devil, which is, you know, this will be at this point, the dragon at this point, because... We see that halfway through is the man of sin, a human being, but, it's, but has given power by the, uh, the dragon, which is Satan himself. Now this all, I don't want to get into this real heavy because I did videos about this, but this is at the time. Now at that time in heaven, there's a war in heaven and Satan declares war in heaven against God. Why did he do that? That's insane. But Michael takes Satan and throws him onto the earth. He lands on earth and I do believe it's around this time that the man is killed with the deadly wound. And three and a half days later, Satan's like, well, I'm on the earth now. And I think God confines Satan to earth because it, now God always lets Satan uh, kind of go through heaven and earth as he wanted to, just as he pleased. But I think when he gets thrown out of heaven, he'll be confined to earth, into the world. And I think that when that man of sin is assassinated three and a half days later, Satan will actually inhabit the body of the dead man and possess it. And in the second half is when Satan will actually be in the body of the dead man, the beast which is also called the Antichrist. And this is when the second half of tribulation, because tribulation is seven years, split three and a half and three and a half. This second half of the years is this. When it's, he gives the mark of the beast, worship the beast in its image, which there will be a false prophet that will pay so much homage to him to where he's going to make a, like, it sounds like he's going to make some kind of a statue to him or something that will animate and move and possibly speak or whatever and people will be forced to worship it. If you refuse, you have to refuse to worship the beast or its image and take the mark. You have to refuse these things. That's also a work. In tribulation, you have to refuse. A work can also be something you don't do as well. So in tribulation, you cannot take the mark of the beast, worship the beast or its image. There's people out there that, that, that teach something that's not true. They believe that if you see Jesus and you take the mark and you see Jesus coming back in arm again, if you just cut your right hand off, because the, a mark was in that, the mark of the beast was in it, then it's okay. I don't believe that. Because they go back to Jesus saying, if your right hand offend, you cut it off. I believe Jesus was speaking about a different time, not tribulation. I believe Jesus was speaking the millennial kingdom. Jesus had the kingdom gospel. He wasn't preaching what was preached today by Paul. That's of a different time, a different dispensation. The Jews as a nation rejected Jesus. So God says, all right, Paul, you're up. I'm going to speak through you. And Jesus spoke through Paul. Throughout Paul's life, and uh, you know, after Paul got saved, and was teaching people, here's what the Gentiles need to do to get saved: just trust and have faith, believe. Three words that mean the same thing in the Bible about what I did. Trust in what I did and how I did it. That blood atonement, dying and rising on the third day. Just believe it. You believe I did it for you, and that's it. However, it is different in tribulation. When it comes to this, we see we can, we have to not do things. You know, in tribulation, those that you would go through it. Now, let's look at Revelation, um, let's see, Revelation 14, 10, and 11, because we read 12. Now, here's what happens if you take the mark of the beast. Of course, we just talked about if your right hand offended, you cut it off, as Jesus said. Again, I believe Jesus was talking the millennial kingdom, not in tribulation and in Armageddon. Because, as I, again, as I said, the kingdom gospel was Jesus basically teaching Jews how to live in the millennial kingdom and what it's going to be like. You know, so that's why it's a different gospel today. People get confused. People aren't rightly dividing their Bibles, as it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. The study that showed us self approved unto God. A work from being not ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing, here we go. And people, so many people don't use dispensations or understand that. And so many people are anti um, dispensation. It's horrible. Dispensations are so helpful to help us understand the Bible and to help us rightly divide it. And dispensations are so important. Because dispensations are written, uh, you know, mentioned in the Bible by Paul four times in the Bible. This isn't just some made-up word all of a sudden. The word dispensations in the Bible four times. So, we see that's not really the case. So, if you take the mark of the beast, worship the beast or its image, you are 
excuse my language, screwed. Here's why. Revelation chapter 14, 10 and 11 says, uh, let's see here. Let me read 9 and 10 and 11. It says, And the third angel followed, uh, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark on his right hand or his forehead, the same shall drink of the wine of the, the wine of the wrath of God, which poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever received the mark of his name. Now, let's see this again. It's saying forever and ever. They'll get no rest. Let me put my glasses back on. It's in verse 11, it says again, And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. That means forever, never ending. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast. Uh, let's see, worship the beast in his image and whoever received the mark on the right, uh, excuse me, well, uh, mark of his name, right hand or forehead. Now, who is going to be tormented for, forever and ever? And it's going to come, and the smoke's going to come up. Well, that's going to be, let me move this down. That's going to be here in the lake of fire. When people die and they're not saved, they're out of the will of God. They're done. If someone goes to hell, that's it. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. They're done. You cannot be saved after you die if you're not saved already in your life. Right here. It said this is hell for lost people. Now, there, hell was not permanent. Hell was temporary because after the, the thousand year reign in the millennial kingdom, there will be something called a great white throne of judgment. And God will actually judge the, those that were never saved. And they won't be able to go before God and say, Lord, here's my case. I love you. And I, I, I believe you now. He's like, no. You're getting the, the, the judgment for your degree of punishment for when you go into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is eternal. The lake of fire never ends. A lot of people want to teach all this garbage called uh, universal salvation. Universal salvation basically teaches that uh, whether you're a sinner or you're not, then uh, you know, you're going to hell and in the lake of fire. But once you've paid off your sins, what you've committed, then God will let you with him for eternity. There is no paying off the of sins. Only Jesus' blood can pay for your sins. That's it. You cannot pay off your sins. You can't like, go to jail and be like, well, you did this crime, you go to jail for this amount of time, then you can come out and be free. That's not the same thing. That's different. This is eternal. This is eternal once you get going because hell, you're not going to come out of there until the great weight of judgment and then the lake of fire. You'll be forever and ever. Universal salvation, the teaching is wrong. You know who teaches us? A variation of universal salvation, Mormons. They have the celestial and the terrestrial uh, planes and things like that, these, these uh, kingdoms and all these things. Like People that were never Mormons will be in this level. People that were really practicing Mormons will be up here with God and everything else and all, these, all this garbage. So that is a, a false teaching from Satan. Universal salvation is not right. It is deadly wrong. It's very dangerous to believe something like that. Because people say, well, I can just live my life and pay off all my sins in hell or even the lake of fire. And I'll come out one day and be with Jesus for eternity. That's not the case at all. Once someone goes to hell, that's it. Not only that, people that go to, to, go to hell, they don't even spend hell the thousand years of the millennial kingdom in hell. And this is not a place you want to be. This is the wrath of God. And in the lake of fire... You're swimming around the burning sulfur lake for eternity? Are you kidding me? That sounds the most terrifying thing I could ever imagine. It's terrible. But getting back to this, we see that it is, it is works. Uh, faith and works. Faith and believe Jesus was the Messiah. That's what the Jews need to understand and then believe that. But they also need to, you know, it's, it says that God's commending them in tribulation for keeping the commandments. Well, who's keeping commandments? The Jews. They're keeping commandments. And also, what we see here is that there are also works for you to not do. Well, don't take the mark of the beast. Don't worship the beast or the image. And this is just like a horrible time because the Bible says this will be the worst time that the world will ever experience. It's tribulation. So is this something you want to go through? You okay with that? Because I'm not. Because I love the Lord and I want to serve Jesus and I want to please the Lord every day. Every day I want to you know, please the Lord in some way because we have been created for God's pleasure. And that's amazing to think of that. But we see it's all about the, the, the gospel. You hear the gospel, you know, the truth of the gospel, no gospel, the gospel, you're going to hear the gospel all over the, 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 the Bible. But people are saying the word gospel, but they're not telling you what it is. Has your preacher, your church told you what the gospel is? They can say the word gospel, their head turns blue, pops off. I don't know. 
But what is the gospel? Well, the gospel is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Are you watching YouTube preachers and stuff like that? That's great. But are they giving you the gospel? Are they giving you sound doctrine? Well, let's go ahead and see. If you're the first time seeing this video, those of you that see my video probably get sick of it, but I don't know who can get sick of hearing the gospel. The gospel is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, and it says, Moreover, brother, and I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also you also receive, and where you stand. Or which you are, you are also saved. You're saved if you keep in memory what I preach unto you unless you believe in vain. Now, vain is vanity. Vain is something that you're trusting in outside of what Jesus did. We don't trust anything outside of what Jesus did for our salvation. It's only what Jesus did. It says, For I deliver you, first of all, that which also, also I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the gospel. Of course, you point, excuse me, how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. How did he die for our sins? Well, he spilled his blood. Father God in heaven accepted that blood atonement. It says, and he was buried and he rose again the third day according to scriptures. Right, he was buried and he rose again the third day. If you trust in what he did and how he did it. Well, what he did and how he did it, he died on the cross for your sins, spilling your blood. The blood is so important. If you do not believe that there has been a blood sacrifice made for your sins, you're going to hell. I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be straight with you. I'm not trying to be rude or mean or blunt with you in a mean way. I'm doing it because I love you. I don't want you going down here to hell and in the lake of fire. I want you to come to Jesus like Jesus is what you did. I trust in that blood washed my sins away. I trust that you died on the cross and rose again the third day. Because soon, whether you're saved or not, you will rise. You're gonna rise and see Jesus at the rapture, or you're gonna rise and see Jesus at the great when we throw the judgment when He throws you out of hell to stand before Him. So you can go and. State your case, whatever you want, because it's not a case. It's a punishment, and you're going down the lake of fire. How does that not scare you to death? Because there's, no more, there's nothing more fact than the King James Bible, because God spoke right through all these prophets and all these apostles. And he tells you like it is. Here's what it is. Jesus also would say a lot. He'd say, verily, verily. Well, verily, verily means truly, truly. Jesus like, you've got to listen to me. And what was Paul saying? You've got to listen to me. This is very serious. And there's going to be false teachers and false you know, prophets and all these things. And there are out there today. And I don't want to go there and talk against denominations and talk against other religions. But there's a lot of people knocking on your door, different religions that are trying to deceive you and tell you things that aren't real. But you won't fall for that garbage if you know your Bible. Because... A lot of these different religions are easy to debunk. So you've got to be careful. These are just things that are going to happen. But I just want to say that there are, there, if you go through tribulation, there's faith plus works. You've got to be willing to lose your head. Your head will be chopped off if you refuse the mark of the beast. And you have to do it in the name of Jesus Christ because you like, I, I love Jesus more than my own life. And I didn't accept that blood atonement here, that faith in it, so I'm going to have to give my blood and spill my blood for Jesus. Do you really want to do that? You don't have to. I'm not. I'm saved. I'm washed in the blood by faith, trust, belief. Three words that mean the same thing in the Scriptures. It's all about what Jesus said, because Paul says he's an apostle to the Gentile. He magnifies his office of apostleship. Romans 11, 13. Romans uh, 2, 16 says that we will be judged by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Paul said my gospel. You'll be judged by Jesus Christ. Of course you will. Jesus Christ will sit on the throne and judge you, whether you're the great way of judgment for the if you're never saved, God forbid, or if you are actually the uh, excuse me the, the judgment seat of Christ for saved people that's judged on your service. See, your sins were paid for on the cross if you're saved. Then you're, you're judged on your service. Have you served Jesus today? Why not? It's time to do things for the Lord. There's so many things you can do for the Lord. Even prayer is a service. God bless it. You know, there's a lot of people that are great at praying. God listens to your prayers if you have been washed. If you have no sins in your soul, God's listening. But if you got sins in your soul, God is not listening. So come to Jesus. And I hope this video helps you. If this is tribulation, brothers and sisters, I pray for you. But if you're saved and this is not yet tribulation, then amen. You got saved. Let's go. And I'll talk to you later.